so Dan came over and uh, we're knocking out a bunch of videos today. One is going to be the kind of the final video on the veins. Um, we're going to both cover both uh, trad and compound veins. So, and not just veins, feathers, some of the differences. Anyway, out of the gate, like right here, I've got, uh, these are primary actual turkey feathers. They do a little bit wetter, better in the weather than just a standard feather. Um, this is a four inch um, trad vein. I usually shoot three inch ones, but I was screwing around. And this, this is the new Phoenix vein. So as far as some of the differences, we'll compare the two feathers. Um, I've had people tell me that the shield cut, which is what this one is, uh, steers an arrow a little bit better. It probably does. I've never been able to notice that much. So as far as whether parabolic or shield, um, I found the parabolic is a quieter feather uh, compared to the shield a little bit. Steering, I haven't really noticed a big difference. Um, the only thing really to me that's cool or good about a feather uh, is they look cool. After that, they kind of suck. They're loud. They do glue on easy enough, but they're not durable. When they get wet, they're pretty much worthless uh, when they flatten out. Um, again, these actual primary turkey feathers uh, last a little longer, and I do spray them with like kiwi or um, nick wax to help them last a little longer. But super loud, probably not the best choice if you have other options, um, when I say that meaning a vein. You can obviously shoot off the shelf a springy whatever flipper with these, you can shoot off whatever you want. Uh, so with these, this I designed a few years ago with AAE, the trad vein, and then this is newer, and I didn't have as much to do with this one, but what they did is they took an AAE hybrid vein and then they cut slits in it so it folds down. Now initially I know Nick had said you can't shoot this off of an arrow rest. And I think what they meant by that was not a springy rest because that's what I've been shooting it off of and it does just fine. So pros and cons to the Phoenix. Uh, it's a little bit louder uh, than the trad vein, not much, but it is a little bit louder. It is a lot easier to get to stick. It's, it's, a, it's a hybrid vein. It's a licking stick. You don't have to prep it. You can just glue it right on. Um, the base is much bigger. The base is much stiffer. Um, no jokes about those comments. Uh, so easy enough. The uh, stability wise or, or forgiveness off of the shelf. I know uh, Newman, I'll put a, you know, whatever I can put a link on my page as far as he did kind of a test with these as well as uh, Rugged Bowman. I noticed these off the shelf are a little more critical than a trad vein, but pretty dang good. Off a of springy, not too, too bad, but they're just not quite as smooth as a trad vein or a feather, but they're close. So why would you choose one of these over a trad vein? If you can't get a trad vein to stick worth a shit, um, if you have issues fletching them, this is a, I would shoot the Phoenix. If you're doing fine with a trad vein, you probably don't want to switch, you don't need to. Um, this is a three inch version. I've had people ask for shorter ones. I, this thing's pretty damn low profile. So I don't know that you would want to go any shorter for a hunting situation. I'm steering four different broadheads uh, with all these setups and these do just fine. And, and again, they're not super noisy. They're just a little bit more noisy than a, than a trad vein. So easy to fletch, pretty durable, um, kind of quiet, not quite as wide as a trad vein. Um, trad vein, not overly durable, right? When they go through an animal, you can get waves. Uh, the biggest negative to them is they're hard to fletch. A lot of people got like super irritated about trying to get them to fletch. So um, again, if, if you're using trad veins already, and they're doing fine for you, I wouldn't switch. If you hate them because you can't get them to, to fletch or, or stick, um, definitely go to a Phoenix. No matter what, both of these or either of these are going to be quieter than a feather by a lot, by a stretch. And especially if you get an imperfection, like Dan was laughing earlier when I was shooting, he was filming, you get a couple little dings in a feather. It's like a peregrine falcon missing half a wing at 400 miles an hour coming in. It is loud and believe me, cracked out deer, uh, they will get out of the way without a doubt. So anyway, something to think about as far as that goes. As far as three fletch or four fletch, I've gotten to the point, three fletch for me, somewhere in that three inch range uh, for a stick bow. And I honestly, same with a compound is, is fine. I don't get into the real small fletches. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but three fletch, three inch, uh, left helical for me because that's the way my arrow naturally uh, rotates, two degree offset helical. If you feel four fletch makes you better, shoot it. But again, I, that's the best I've found for me for the most part. So moving on uh, to the little bit more convoluted and complex, uh, which is the uh, compound veins. Um, I'm gonna get out of the way uh, this one, which is an easy vein. 
Um, I ordered these custom. You can get high profile, low profile. You can yeah, basically order anything you want from these guys. They're out of Australia. What you need to do when you get them, they come in a container like this. Um, it's all fletched together at one time, one piece, not fletched together, it's all one piece. So you need to mark your arrow um, where it ends and where the fletch begins. Put a little glue in the beginning, middle and end, slide it over. You can put use your thumbnail, slide it to your thumbnail, clean it off, good to go. How did these do? They did great, out to 100 yards or, well, I have the 120, but as good as I can shoot out to 80 to 100, didn't notice a difference. They're not overly noisy. They're just like any other vein. These are low profile. So when would somebody choose these? I mean, honestly, it's pretty hard not to choose these. <laughs> like for me, I'm lazy, I'm tired of fletching. I mean, look at this shit. We've got hundreds, thousands of veins, bows everywhere. The last thing I wanna do in a great, like for long periods of time is fletch. I've been doing it for way too long, and so fletching four or five dozen errors to me, it was literally getting my nutsack drug, drag, drug across the, the concrete. I don't like doing it. This is super simple. They steer extremely well. You can cut them off super easy, and they peel right off, which is great. So if it was just, let's say, this vein or one option, may not be the best for each person. This was what I chose, which is a two-degree left helical offset, or two-degree offset left helical. Super low profile, and they do awesome with, with mechanicals. Fixed blades, yeah, you know, probably going to want to go maybe with a little bit more ass behind it, a little bit higher profile. I, it would be hard for me not to pick these. They're good. Um, as I'm going to br break this down, these are the super savers. Um, these are also an amazing vein. These steer extremely well. They're pretty dang quiet. Um, Kyle, the guy that owns this company, he's kind of one of those pipe hitting dorks. He will go off of the deep end if you ask him about these veins as far as airflow and airfoil and a bunch of other shit. I'm too uh, really redneck to understand, but these work great. They're clean. They ha I had zero issues getting to stick. I used a prep pen. You don't necessarily have to use a prep pen. I did for these, um, but a great option. They steer fine. You know, a lot of the kind of semantics of the long distance stuff where this thing would maybe do better than another vein, meaning in stability, it also will drop out the bottom more in long distance shots because of that stability. So again, great option. There's nothing wrong with it. Really like these. Um, this is an AAE hybrid 2.6. I've used these probably more than any other vein. Um, people ask these compared to a stealth. Why do I use these? I'm lazy. I don't like using a prep pan if I don't have to. These stick on really easy, but they are heavy as shit. Um, I think this is probably the heaviest 2.6 inch vein on the, on the market, uh, really. Uh, so something to think about, but these do great. I mean, these are a great option. There's nothing wrong with them and they're pretty dang quiet. The Silent Nights, this is another one. I think the first video I did with these, I said you had to use a, a prep pen because that's what it said on their website. I guess you, you don't have to use a prep pen with these. These are a great option. They're not super stiff, uh, like a tack vein's a little bit, um, tack vein's a little bit stiffer. So they're, they're a damn good vein. And uh, these guys have been in business. Like I remember using these back in the day where you had to SOS, like sandpaper your shaft and clean it off with toluene and shit like 30 years ago, it's horrible. Um, it's not like that anymore with Flex Fletch. These are a great vein. This is what's on my wife's arrow. Great stability all around good. Like not a lot of downsides to those. This is a Max Hunter. I, if you guys have noticed, I'm not a, a real, I'm not a big fan of higher profile veins, especially a higher profile vein made of softer material because it is extremely loud and can kind of fold over. Now, this Super Saver has a little bit ho higher profile in the back, but it's a little bit stiffer, where this is a little bit higher profile all the way through. Obviously, I have a great relationship with AAE, but this Max Hunter is a vein I probably wouldn't, wouldn't shoot. Again, the higher profile, the noise, it just doesn't make for the best option with the other options on the market. Uh, this is the Air Razor. Out of all of the veins, if I had to pick one, the Air Razor would be the one I would hunt with today for the simple fact of the noise. Um, it is the quietest vein that I've shot. The downsides to it, it can get a little bit wavy blowing through a target. Uh, it does fletch up really easy. There's no prep pin, need, prep pin needed. And so, you know, when I compare these two, I said like this would be hard not to pick. 
If I have a slower bow, for example, if I'm hunting really sketched out animals, if I've had like a history of animals ducking my arrow, this is gonna be a better option, right? This is no doubt going to be the quietest option on the market. They're easy to fletch. When you look at this, this is still pretty quiet. It steers my arrow just fine. This is the lady laziness factor. If I don't wanna fletch, why wouldn't I put three on at one time in literally 15 seconds, where here, I've got a lot more time, even with the lick and stick method, I've still got six minutes probably with fletching one of these up, 30 seconds with this. So, I mean, oddly enough, I'm going through all of these. The fletching is not going to probably be that big of a difference when you're hunting. It does make some difference, obviously, meaning the noise and things like that. But I get a lot of questions on the three or four fletch offset, helical, things like that. Most people asking those questions, and I mean this in the most positive way possible, can't really even shoot well enough to see the difference. So like there's a video Levi did, it's a great video. I think Dan and Podia Marcher did another video, a lot of them out there. If we stand here, Dan and I, and shoot at 100 yards all day long, or 80, are we going to see a difference between, let's say this AAE hybrid and uh, the, the Super Sabre hitting about eight inches low at 80 to 100 yards? compared to a tack vein, uh, which is right here. I don't have anything fleshed up with them now. They're actually at my buddy's house, but compared to a tack vein or, or these or the, or the air razor, these are gonna hit a little higher, the tack veins at 80 to 100 yards. These other ones, they're gonna drop out the bottom. A hybrid's even hard to compare to for the most part because they're so damn heavy. So an equal parallel is just impossible. So really what I would focus on, three fletch, three inch or less, Offset, one to two degrees, helical. Um, you don't have to have that with a compound. A little bit of heli or helical is not a bad idea. Um, I would focus more on lower profile and a little bit longer than I would higher profile and shorter. I have found that to be the best bet. Probably the loudest uh, that I've found is any four fletch higher profile. So an AAE hybrid HP, for example. This is a Silent Night 2.0. This is actually, in a four-fletch setup, one of the loudest I've ever tested. Um, same with the, um, like a Max Hunter in four-fletch and a HP, yeah, the HP, the 2.0 Silent Night, um, and these Max Hunters in a four-fletch were the some of the loudest I've ever tested, which is oddly enough, total opposite. This is one of the quieter options, the three fletch silent night. So that should, you know, people didn't understand that when I first did my review. The earlier one was like, how can that be possible? It's like, well, I don't know if you, you know, you've got four short higher profile, three lower profile or the same profile. It's just quieter for the airfoil, however that works. So again, I really do not focus on a four fletch higher profile rather than a lower profile, longer vein and three fletches seem to be the best. So. I'm probably confusing people, but I definitely would use these for anything. The easy veins, they're awesome. The hybrid, always a tried and true, super easy to fletch, whatever, but they're heavy as shit. The air razor, the quietest vein I've ever tested. And then something like a tack vein and the, or the super savers, good all around choice. There isn't really a bad one here, but if I was gonna fling one out of the pile, it's definitely gonna be this higher profile Max Hunter. This is something I probably never use. So, if you have any questions on any of this, I think I've talked long enough, probably confused everyone, um, but throw them down and then answer them to the best of my ability.